What's up everyone? I know it's been a while, but I am back. Today's gonna be one of the most comprehensive long-range meta videos I've ever done, probably. We're gonna use some advanced features on TGD, Metagen, and True TTK simulation, as well as accuracies that I have for controller-specific players and mouse and keyboard-specific players to define the long-range meta for both of those inputs, independent of one another. So, pretty excited for this video. As always, if you guys appreciate the content, uh, hit that like button for me, subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 250,000. Most people, like 50% of the people that watch the video are not subscribed, so that would be really appreciated just so we can you know, get past that quarter million mark. Pretty crazy, uh, but I appreciate this all the support. As always, the, the actual best way to support all the work that goes into the website, some of you are probably web developers and programmers. There's a lot of stuff that goes into maintaining a website and native apps. We do have a native Android and iOS app. Those are linked below if you want to get those downloaded. But the best way to support is just a direct subscription. We get like 97%-ish of the money from these subscriptions. And this is just a two-man operation. It's me and Christina, my friend from college, who uh, has helped me build True Game Data since day one. So as always, that is the absolute best way to support. Even if you're just a YouTube uh, watcher or viewer, uh, you can think of this like a Patreon, even if you don't use the website that much. So it just helps support the, the videos, the website, and the apps. But... Uh, let's get into it and we'll talk about the season four and a half long range meta. Like I said, we're going to use two of the premium features on true game data to figure out what the meta is for season four reloaded. So Metagen, if you don't know what this is, is an AI tool that I built that will essentially try to optimize all the stats for the weapons and output uh, the meta. So it, it will output a gun with attachments based on your input. So you can select what type of run you want to do, whether it's for close range, long range, Quad size trios and quads, those are the only four options we have right now, but I am working on a huge update to Metagen. I know I've been talking about that for a long time. Difficult tool to, to build and work with. It's very complex. So we're building an awesome user interface for Metagen version 2.0, which will hopefully come sometime in the next couple months. But it's going to give you full control over everything. So right now you can say, yeah, I want weapons to be suppressed. I want to reserve a slot for the optic. Um, I don't want any lasers to be visible, or I don't care if lasers are visible. And you can customize the weightings uh, of different stats. So if you think that ADS time is more important than what my default calculations will give you, weight these however you want, more, more and less important. And you run this, the results come out, and you'll see score that the Metagen AI tool has output for the gun and a given attachment combination. It'll show you the top 20 builds uh, for each gun that come out. So pretty cool tool, but we're going to use that in combination with the true TTK simulation tool. So the true TTK simulation tool can really help give you more realistic results than just these theoretical TTK charts. So the theoretical TTK charts are what we relied on for a long time. Um, they are good, they're helpful, but when you add, you know, eight of the top weapons from Metagen, and like trying to decipher what really is the best in here can be kind of difficult sometimes, especially given that this is just assuming 100% of bullets hit. So that's what the true TTK simulation tool, this is another feature on TGD, um, can help with. So basically... I have a video that describes how to, how to use this tool, and I will link that below if you're interested in trying it out. Basically, you shoot the last target dummy with a given gun in the firing range, and you do that like five or ten times and get an average accuracy for that weapon and build. And then you can plug those accuracies into the True TTK simulation tool on TGD, and it will extrapolate out that accuracy uh, for an estimated accuracy at all ranges. What that does is gives you this chart here, which again is pretty messy. It's kind of hard to see things here, but this is a true simulation of the TTK and damage profile at all ranges with your specific accuracy. That's the whole mantra of TGD at this point is find your meta, not what somebody else is telling you, not what some app is telling you is the best. Find what is the best for you specifically. So that's the point of this tool. Um, you can zoom into any X range that you want, but the Another really powerful feature of this is weighting this chart by the engagement probability by distance graph here. So uh, this basically is a weighting curve. It will, it will multiply the Y value on here by the Y value on here at the same X value. And what that does is basically say, okay, for this one, the, def the default is 35 meters for the mean here. You can move this around however you want, but 35 meters for the mean and then the standard deviation basically changes how focused it weights around a certain point. So 35 meters, um, say you think most of your engagements happen right around there, so you can set standard deviation to 10 and then run calculate. And this will take the above TTK chart up here. Uh, it will take that and weight it by this graph at all points along the X and give you a single number for a weighted TTK for 
each gun in the comparison. So this is really powerful because one, it takes accuracy into account uh, at all ranges, and two, it weights it appropriately based on what you think your engagements are, how, how often they happen at certain ranges. So this is super powerful. If you run these tests for these guns yourself and then plug them into this, you're really gonna know what you should be using other than just what someone tells you you should be using. So in this video, I'm gonna combine Metagen with True TTK Simulation as well as the data from what you guys have plugged in here. So each time anyone on the website runs this simulation, I save the accuracies for mouse and key or controller and then each individual weapon. It's not tied to users or anything right now. Uh, I just have a huge list of how accurate each weapon is with, with each input. So that's how I can give you guys kind of a, a true meta for controller and mouse and key. All right, so how I actually did this, I came into Metagen, I did a default long range quads run, and then I just take the top eight weapons. So we got the Holger 556, SVA 545, MTZ 556, Stack Evolver, Holger 26, MCW, and BP50. And then I, I find the community accuracies for both controller and mouse and key from all the data you guys have provided with True TTK Sim. And then I run the True TTK Sim with those accuracies and I get the values for the TTKs. So that's what we're gonna go look at. Uh, obviously you guys saw the Metagen output there. So Metagen thinks that the Holger 556 is best and we're gonna try to decide if that is correct. So for this video, like I said, I was uh, super in depth here. So I did small map numbers, big map numbers, and then I also did one for small map with ADS included because I feel like on the smaller maps, ADS being included in your TTK is pretty important. So I wanted to show that as well. So the settings that I, I used for the smaller maps, I used a mean engagement distance of 30 meters, and then a standard deviation of 15 meters. For the bigger maps, I did uh, 40 meters for the average, and then the standard deviation was 20. So that kind of spreads out your engagements a little bit, moves them to a little longer. I did both those things, and then also looked at controller and mouse and key numbers. And here are the results for controller. So this is the controller average accuracy per weapon using the true TTK simulation tool for the top eight weapons. I have them sorted by the best TTK on big map. So a couple things to note before we even start talking about this. Tac Evolver, I think, um, if you remember when the Tac Evolver first came out, it was meta for like a week. It had basically no recoil. Uh, I believe some of that data is still included in here. I tend to segment the data out over time um, but I don't know that I had done it yet since the TAC Evolver changed, so take the TAC Evolver with a grain of salt. I do think it's a great weapon, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's you know, the best weapon necessarily. I think it's a top weapon, but I don't think it's necessarily the best. So what I'm saying is the accuracy that I have might be a little bit too high, which means that all these numbers would be a little bit too good. Um, same with the SVA 545. So this isn't because the weapon changed. This is because a lot of people using the tool are probably running it with the SVA on burst mode, and they're just forgetting to use the SVA on burst. For the comparison, when it's on burst, it has no recoil, so the accuracy numbers go way up. Uh, I think on burst, my community average was like 66%, so this is supposed to be the automatic version. It's gonna be much lower than that, probably. I don't actually have any way of verifying whether or not people are doing the correct thing here, so it's just probably lower than that by a few percent, but hard to know. So the first two, take those with a grain of salt. Uh, and then in third place here for the TTK on big map, uh, Holger 556, 52.2% accurate on controller uh, against that last target dummy, so not bad. So it has the third best or the first best if you exclude those first two that I said the data might be incorrect for. Uh, pretty good TTK on small map as well, so it's a little bit behind uh, the MTZ 556 on small map, but a little bit better on big map. And then if you include ADS, the MTZ 556 actually takes over because the Holger has a slower ADS with the, the meta builds. So something to keep in mind. BP50 for the last multiple months looks like it performs really well on everything on TGD from the TTK simulator to Metagen to just looking at TTK charts. It looks like it performs well, but for some reason it just has never been like the primary pick for people. So something about it I think is just off and something about uh, the way we test accuracy in this, the firing range for the true TTK sim tool I think doesn't actually capture that the way it should. Maybe it's because the recoil is very horizontally bouncy. So if a target is actually moving, it's harder to track them. I don't know. Uh, it's just one of those weapons that always looks great, but just doesn't ever quite perform like you'd expect it to from the theoretical numbers. Uh, Holger 26 down here beneath the BP50. has obviously been the meta for a long time, but with the recent patch, 
Um, some of these other guns snuck above it, specifically the Holger 5.56, I think, is just kind of better than the Holger 26 now. 53.1% uh, accurate, a little slower TTK, definitely slower on small map, and uh, uh, when you include ADS, because it's a, an LMG, it's going to be much heavier and much slower. So it doesn't look good for small map, looks okay for big map still, but I think these other ones are going to be a little bit better. MCW got a nice buff in this patch. I believe it was two damage buff to the last damage range. Um, still not a great weapon, but you can see the accuracy is exceptionally high. Uh, it has some of the easiest to control recoil in the game. Probably the easiest, actually. Like I said, I think these two that beat it, Dac Evolver and SVA 545, I think those have bad data points in them, so I think that they are probably actually below the MCW now. Um, but you can see even with that super high accuracy, because it doesn't output that much damage, a little worse TTK for big map than some of the other options here. Not good for small map, just because in the first few damage ranges, it does not have good time to kill at all. And then, including ADS, it gets a little bit better than these LMGs, but still not very good compared to some other. Last up, SOA Subverter. Uh, this is a weapon that has really good time to kill up close, out to like 25-ish meters, but you really just don't have that many engagements in that range with a, a long-range weapon. You're not trying to, at least. And it has really bad ADS time on top of that, so in those close-range engagements where... You got an ADS to shoot somebody, and they're trying to shoot you as well. Uh, you can see that 1639, it just doesn't compare with these other options, even though it has really good time to kill up close. So, for controller, I think that Holger 556 and MTZ 556 are probably the top two right now. SVA 545 and TAC Evolver, very close to those as well. I think the SVA has been good for a long time, obviously. Uh, TAC Evolver is a slept on weapon, it has good numbers across the board, just has bad ADS time. Um, but it really has good numbers across the board and is a pretty solid pick. Still, a recoil got nerfed, but it's still very good. All right, on to the keyboard and mouse numbers. So these are specifically users that are inputting that they're on keyboard and mouse. There is much less data for this, so it's less accurate. So if you're a keyboard and mouse user, go use that tool, man. Help me out with the data. <laughs> um, but anyway, number one, TAC Evolver. The same reason I mentioned for uh, the controller numbers. I would not fully trust that. Uh, it is an accurate weapon, but it's not this much more accurate than everything else. It's just that some of those old data points were included. They will be excluded going forward, so for future videos it will no longer have those numbers in there. But I do think the TAC Evolver is excellent, like I've said. I think it's a highly competitive weapon. I just can't confirm what the actual accuracy is because it got changed and some of the data is mixed in. Um, second place, BP50. Like I was talking about with controller, this thing always looks amazing. 56% accurate on mouse and key is crazy. Super, super accurate weapon. Um, really good TTK on big map. Really good TTK on small map. Great TTK on small map when you inclu include the ADS time as well because it's a lighter weapon. Quick to ADS. So again, it looks amazing. The small mag is part of the problem, but just doesn't feel like it is as good as the numbers say it is ever. And I don't know why that is. Uh, next up, Holger 556. This is this got a nice buff in the most recent patch, Season 4 Reloaded. 54.1% accurate for the community on mouse and key. Uh, quick note, just because keyboard and mouse is a little bit more accurate at 55 meters does not mean keyboard and mouse is better. Um, I, I would argue that yes, keyboard and mouse is a little bit better at longer ranges, like 50 meters and on, but aim assist is so strong up close and has instant reaction time that controller is much better anywhere inside 50 meters and it gets progressively better the closer you get to the target because the target can move so fast up close on like an angular basis um, having no time to react to that on keyboard and mouse is very very difficult you have to essentially predict what they're going to do whereas aim assist will help you with that uh, and has an instantaneous reaction time so i wanted to mention that i do think keyboard and mouse is a little bit better at longer ranges not a lot better but a little bit better and also better at sniping um, but up close controllers is wildly better Back to the Holger 556. I think this really is the meta for controller and mouse and key. It's just got great numbers across the board. It has, does have a small mag, but it shoots pretty slow, so you get decent damage for mag still. Um, easy to control. Community accuracies are great with it, uh, and just has good numbers across the board now after this patch. Holger 26, the previous meta, it's a little bit more accurate than the Holger 556 for the community, um, but it's just it's much worse up close. So you can see the TTK for small map comes out much worse, even though the big map TTKs are pretty comparable. Um, and then if you include, include ADS, it gets even more worse. So it just has slower ADS because it's an LMG. Makes sense. SVA545, again, take these numbers with a grain of salt for the same reasons I mentioned for controller. Um, I think some people are using the burst version and plugging in the burst version's accuracy, which is much higher. It has no recoil when you put it on burst. 
some of those are skewing this data some, uh, but it is still a good weapon. It's not going to be probably the meta on mouse and key. I think Holger 5.56 is going to be quite a bit better, but it is still pretty good, especially on burst mode. Like I said, it has no recoil on burst, essentially the same time to kill, um, so that's always a great option for controller or mouse and key. MTZ 5.56, pretty inaccurate, so mouse and key hates this weapon for some reason, and I think it's really interesting how certain weapons perform differently on controller versus mouse, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, but even, even though it has bad accuracy, because most engagements on small map are close range, and the ADS time is really good on the MTZ 5.56 when you build it out for, for the meta, uh, it does really well on TTK plus ADS on small map, and pretty good on just TTK on small map, because the closer you get, the less the 55 meter accuracy matters, right? Because the target's much closer, much easier to control recoil. Um, so I think it's pretty good, but I do think for big map, and just for consistency's sake, um, Holger 5.56 can be a little bit better. SOA Subverter is much, much more accurate on keyboard and mouse than it is on controller. And I think that's really interesting, so we'll talk about that in a second. But even though it is uh, more accurate, it's still not a great weapon. You can see it has a good time to kill for small map. It matches the BP-50, so I think if you're playing the small maps, it's probably okay. Um, but you can see that when you add in that ADS time, it gets really, really slow. So I still think something like a Holger 5.56 or a BP-50 um, is really going to serve you better on small map. MTZ 5.56 maybe as well. Just it's, it's just really slow and really heavy. It's almost like an LMG. Uh, in last place, the MCW. This, interestingly, is not super accurate on mouse and key. 55.1% uh, accuracy compared to uh, all these other weapons, it's, it's about the same, even though it feels like it's really easy to control. So because of that, it doesn't have very TTK numbers, and it just doesn't come out very good. So mouse and key, I think Holger 5.56, BP-50 looks better than the Holger 5.56 based on this. Uh, and a lot of other other stats, but like I said, it just doesn't perform. I don't know why that is. It just does not perform like it should in most cases. I suspect it's because of the smaller mag and uh, the bouncy recoil. It has very horizontally bouncy recoil, and you can never predict that. It just bounces around. There's nothing you can do about it. So at longer ranges, I think it struggles to be precise when you need it to be precise. Uh, Hogar 26 still very good. SVA 545 on Burst, TAC Evolver, both excellent choices. Like I said, I think the TAC Evolver is a big sleeper pick right now, so if you want to use something that's a little weird, a little different, TAC Evolver is probably it. SVA on Burst or SVA without Burst, pretty good. MTC 556, specifically good for small map, but okay for long map. I just think that uh, Hogar 556 is a little bit better. But yeah, that's the keyboard and mouse. Like I said, I wanted to talk a little bit about how weapons perform differently on mouse and key versus controller. So... Basically, I did some math to get like a preferred input for each weapon and how much each weapon prefers that input over the other input. How I did this was um, I took the accuracy for each weapon on controller, the accuracy for each weapon on keyboard and mouse. Uh, I, and for controller specifically, I compared the difference between the accuracy for that weapon and the average accuracy for all of the weapons. So that gives me basically how accurate the SOA subverter is on controller compared to the other weapons on controller. So 6.6% .6 less accurate than the average controller weapon. Did the same thing for keyboard and mouse. So that's, this gets me how each weapon compares to its own population. And then I just subtract those two populations to find uh, the, the resultant difference between how much one is preferred on one input versus the other. So if we do that math, it comes out. Um, the green numbers on here are preferring mouse and key input. And then the red numbers are preferring controller input. So weapons that perform much better on mouse and key SOA Subverter and TAC Evolver. And BP-50 and Holger 26 are close, but slightly prefer mouse and key. Holger 5.56 slightly prefers controller. MTZ 5.56 pretty strongly prefers controller. MCW and SVA 5.45 strongly prefer controller as well. So, I don't know. Take that information and use it for what you will, but I just think it's interesting. All right, getting into these recommended builds, we're going to start with the TAC Evolver. Like I said, I think this is a... Slept on weapon, I think it's very good. It has a slow fire rate, which can make it not feel great on like keyboard and mouse, and, and in general, higher fire rates just can be better, but uh, it's still very good. I think it's a top weapon for sure. So uh, we got the VT7 Spirit Fire Suppressor. That's going to be pretty standard for most of these weapons, I think. I prefer to stay suppressed, and the stats on this are just good for a long-range gun. The ADS time is painful, plus 14%, but the other benefits are really nice. Recoil, range, bullet velocity, all awesome for a long-range weapon. We're going to use the LFR or LRF Righteous Long Barrel. It says 20% bonus to our range and bullet velocity 
and then also helps recoil. Obviously, it's going to slow you down in some ways, but just a pretty solid barrel there. Because it's an LMG, it's really heavy. We're going to use the SL Razorhawk Laser Light. This is going to really help with our ADS time and making this thing feel a little uh, more reasonable to use compared to other weapons. Uh, it actually has really good iron sights, so I don't think we're going to use an optic on this one. You can obviously change these builds however you want for your own preferences, but yeah, I don't think it really needs an optic. You're going to use the Rampart Heavy Stock. This is going to bring our recoil down significantly. 17% gun kick, 13% recoil. And it doesn't have that big of penalties, to be honest. Just like 1% movement, 2% ADS. Not a huge, uh, huge downside there. And then last up, we are going to use the SL Skeletal vert Vertical Grip. So this is going to help with our vertical recoil, which is what this has the most of. It still has very little recoil in general. Um, but 3% extra horizontal, but it helps with gun kick and vertical. Then also helps our ADS time, which we're obviously very concerned with. This thing feels great. Let's take this into the firing range. I'll show you guys. It's a very, very accurate weapon in general. It has very little recoil. It has good iron sights. I think it's, uh, I think it should be used more than it is for sure. All right, next up, we're going to do the MCW. I'm not going to cover all the eight top weapons just because I think that we're tired of the Holger 26. They already know how to build the Holger 26, so I'm not going to talk about that one. Um, but MCW, we got VT7 Spirit Fire again, the pretty standard option there. Then we will use the uh, MCW Cyclone Long Barrel, just gives you a bunch of range and bullet velocity. Uh, hurts your ADS movement, but that's not that huge of a deal for long range. It's not ideal, but it's not as important as increasing range bullet velocity. Uh, the iron sights are okay on this, but in general, um, I think that I prefer the optic so we're going to use jack glassless you have a search feature on tgd that way now rather than scrolling for an hour um the recoil on this is not great uh it it's has very minimal like horizontal recoil horizontal bounce and very minimal visual recoil so those are good but it does have a decent amount of vertical um i think i just like the rb claw psl grip more than the stock that you can put on there or an underbarrel Messed around with some of them, I just think this is the best uh, attachment there for that. And then you can either use 40 round mag or 60 round drum. This MCW shoots pretty slowly. Um, so you can get away with the 40 round mag because each bullet hits pretty hard and it takes a while to actually eat through the whole mag. Uh, it's just going to be personal preference here. For trios, I'd say probably 40 round. For quads, probably 60 round. But either one of those, you can swap it for what you Pretty solid weapon, not great, but it's uh, it's definitely at least competitive now for the first time. On to the MTZ 5.56. Again, I think the Holger 5.56 is pretty much just better than the MTZ 5.56 at this point, but if you want to try something different, uh, it's worth giving it a shot. And it could just be that you personally control the recoil in the MTZ 5.56 better than the Holger 5.56. Again, that's where using the Troop GTK simulation tool will come in and really help you answer those kind of questions. But anyway, the MTZ 5.56 build, it has S-shaped recoil that's just... Uh, really difficult to control and, and correct for, in my opinion, on mouse and key at least. Um, it should be pretty much the same on controller. But uh, So we're going to use the Komodo Heavy, so this is going to be a little weird one, but it helps 27% with horizontal recoil. We're trying to get that S-shaped pattern squished a little bit so it uh, isn't so S-shaped anymore. So we're going to use that. Um, we're going to throw a barrel on there as well. Again, the recoil on this is just it's just not great. Um, so we're going to look for a barrel that helps damage range, bullet velocity, and recoil, and I think that would be the MTZ Drifter Heavy Barrel. Huge benefit to range and bullet velocity, helps with recoil a little bit. Really, really solid barrel there. I uh, don't love the irons on this one, so we are going to use an optic. Uh, we do have this new optic feature on here, I don't know if you've seen this, but we, you can visualize any of the optics. You just click this little guy here, and you can zoom in on it and see what it looks like. So that's, that's pretty cool, I think. It took a ton of work to get that up and running. Um, but we are going to use, and I always forget the name of this in the moment, the, I can't remember, I'm just going to scroll down, at the bottom, Jack Glassless, then we're going to use the 50 round mag, it's the only option really there that makes any sense for trios and quads, then the last up, like I said, that S-shaped recoil is just really difficult to Correct for and control. So we are going to use EXF close quarters assault stock. This helps with horizontal recoil 13.6%. It 
This makes it usable, I would say. It's still not great. I think the Holger 5.56 is just better, like I keep saying. But let's shoot this a little bit in the firing range so you guys can see it. Just pretty shaky and, and has a decent little S-shaped pattern, but with those attachments, this is as minimal as we can get that. And it's reasonably easy to, to keep it on that, that uh, 55 meter target out there. Last up, we're going to do what I think is probably the new meta, the uh, Holger 5.56. So we're going to start with the VT7 Spirit Fire Suppressor. I'll come back to that. I do think there's another really good option for this weapon. So Spirit Fire Suppressor, um, the Trios, Trios, I don't know how to say it, but this is a barrel that helps with damage range, bullet velocity, and, and recoil, as we're always looking for in a long range gun. Throw that on there. Magazine, 40 round mag. And then the stock, we're going to use the RB Adel Assault Stock. Um, so, two options here. You can either add a jack glassless optic for better you know, visual balance and just seeing your target. The irons are okay on the Holger 5.56, but it kind of like kicks up weird in the back. So like the, the sight posts on the back kind of feel like they get in the way a little bit to me. Um, so I personally would probably use an optic in this case. But if you're not going to use an optic, um, it does have this Morn 20 grip, which is great. Um, gun kick, recoil, helps with your flinch resistance. Um, and then hurts your ADS movement speed a ton, which is unfortunate. But we really just want our long range gun to be, to be as accurate as possible. So I think that's a solid choice as well. Um, but I think this is a weapon that really benefits from the Cassis break. So this has been a semi-meta option for a long time. Obviously, it's not suppressed. It uh, helps your horizontal recoil a ton, but also helps that visual recoil and the visual bounce of the weapon a ton with that firing aim stability. So really good attachment there. That combined with the Jack Glassless, I think is probably my favorite build for this weapon. Just It's just really good in general. So let me hop in, hop in a uh, firing range real quick and show you guys this gun. I think it's, like I said, I think it's the meta personally. At least for now, we'll see if something creeps up later, but just looking at the data, it looks like it's going to be pretty good. So I have it built out here. Yeah, so I've got Cassis, the barrel, Jack Glassless, RB Idle Assault, and I know my screen's off the side. I apologize for that, but I'm just not going to change scenes. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like. It's just very, very little recoil. That's weird that my hit markers were all red there. Never seen that before. Uh, it kind of pulls up to the right pretty hard for the first like three shots and then it's very controllable after that So I think in general it's a very very solid choice for uh, your long-range gun right now All right, everyone that is it for the video I know this was a long one with a lot of detail first video in like 45 days. So maybe I'm out of the uh, Out of the swing of things a little bit, but I appreciate you guys so much for sticking with me for these last four years subscribing to the to the website subscribing to the YouTube channel dropping comments just really appreciate all of that so Thank you so much for the support, and I will see you in the next video.